If you've experienced persistent dry eye and tried these but found no relief, then this medicine just may be the solution you've been looking for. If you have severe dry eye, what is the single most effective treatment to manage your severe dry eye? I'm going to talk about that in about 60 seconds. But first, here's a quick synopsis about dry eye. Our eyes manufacture tears constantly. These tears keep the surface cells on our cornea hydrated. When the surface cells are hydrated, they're transparent and the eye surface and tear film are smooth and we see the best. When we blink, we make more tears. When we blink less, we make less tears. The times when we blink less include staring at screens such as tablets, cell phones, and computers, reading, and overnight when we sleep. When our eyes are dry, the surface cells on the cornea, the front window of the eye, become dry, which makes our vision blurry and our eyes feel like there's a dry, sandy sensation, which causes our eyes to reflexively compensate by tearing up. So a paradoxical but common symptom of dry eye is that our eyes water or tear up. Think about when you're in a windy environment. The wind causes accelerated evaporation of tears from the eye surface and your eyes reflexively tear. When we're young, such as less than 35, our eyes produce the most tears. As we age, everyone develops dry eye. There's no cure. Tears, gels, ointments work for most. These can be purchased over the counter in the grocery store or the pharmacy. Prescription medications such as Restasis or Zedra work well for some, but are quite often very expensive, have a delayed benefit. In other words, they take months to kick in and help alleviate the dryness. And the results sometimes are hit or miss. Some patients experience no benefit from them and some patients experience significant benefit from these prescription drops. Punctal plugs work for some, but not all. Autologous serum tears, in my experience and in my opinion, are the single most effective treatment for severe dry eye. I find that well over 99% of our patients experience significant, huge improvement in their dry eyes when they use serum tears. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about how a person goes about acquiring serum tears, how they're made and how they're used. So how does a person purchase or acquire serum tears. First, you'll need to see your ophthalmologist or optometrist for a comprehensive eye exam and to obtain a prescription for the serum tears. Serum tears cannot be purchased over the counter. For patients seeing our doctors, we will provide you with these two forms. Number one, a prescription to our local compounding pharmacy called Nucara and a five-step instruction guide that walks you through the process to obtain serum tears. Let's discuss these five steps. Number one, you'll need to go to one of these two labs, the Nucara Infusion Center or any lab test now. For any lab test now, there's no appointment necessary. You simply call the number listed here on the sheet. You can walk in and generally the time investment is about 10 to 15 minutes. Any lab test now is open 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. After the blood draw, it takes about 45 minutes to process the serum tears. And then the patient transports the vials of serum tears to New Cure Compounding Pharmacy located about one mile away. The cost for the blood draw is between $40 and $70, and it is not paid for by insurance. It is paid for by the patient directly. For patients having their blood drawn at the Nucara Infusion Center, there's generally a one-week wait. In other words, if you would like to have your blood drawn at the Nucara Infusion Center, which is located in the same shopping complex as the Nucara Compounding Pharmacy, then the Nucara Infusion Center staff would prefer that you schedule your blood draw about one week in advance and they charge a $50 flat fee for the blood draw. There is also a $160 fee for a 72 day supply of the serum tears to both eyes. You can schedule your blood draw and your appointment via their website online. What happens at the New Cara Infusion Center? The staff will check you in at your scheduled appointment time. Then, several tubes of the patient's blood will be drawn by the infusion center team. The blood is withdrawn into a special test tube, which the pharmacist in charge of Nucara Compounding Pharmacy, David Faulkner, describes. 
So these are serum separating tubes. This is going to be basically the plug mechanism by which separates the red blood cells from the serum. After it's spun down, the blood of course will, at first when it's drawn, be on top of this plug here. After it's spun, you'll notice that the red blood cells have migrated below it. This will be kind of in the middle of the tube and above it will be all the serum. The test tubes of your blood are then placed into a centrifuge for 15 minutes. Here we see the appearance of the test tube of blood before it is spun in the centrifuge. Then, 15 minutes later, after the test tube has been spun, here is the appearance of the serum located at the top of the test tube, whereas the red blood cells are at the bottom of the test tube. These test tubes are then transported by the infusion center team to the Nucara compounding pharmacy located in the same shopping center as the new Kara Infusion Center. Patient doesn't walk him over here? No, sir. But the patient walks him over here if it came from any lab test? If they go to any lab test now or any third party lab in general to get their blood drawn and spun down, they will have to bring them and we ask that they do that immediately. This is our negative pressure, 800 compliance sterile lab. Um, we have two hoods in it, but only one hood is actually going to be designated and solely where we make all of the different blood serum tiers, and that's going to be this one right here, the smaller of the two. So, of course, you'll wipe down everything that's going to be introduced into the hood. The hood is made in such a way to take the environmental air within the lab into the hood and then out the exhaust into, uh, into uh, the ceiling and then out through the roof. So here, she'll show me the label that's being made with the date of birth and a name against the patient's name and date of birth labeled onto the actual serum tubes. I'll let her know that that's the one, and then she'll make it. And we do that for every single one that's made before it's made. And after we're done extracting as much as we need, we have a little laminated chart there uh, right above her head on the hood that tells us if we're making, say, 48% and we're able to get, say, 16 mLs of serum, how much total volume we need to bring it back to to yield 40% after we've gotten that 16 mLs of serum. So she's going through each of So she's just trying to fill that entire syringe with the serum from all of those vials. Exactly. Up that, that syringe is how many mL? That is probably, that's a 60 mL syringe. You know, how much does the prescription cost yeah, essentially? Is, that's right. It's $160 to actually have the, the serum tears made. So now she has uh, taken that a syringe, uh -huh. connected it to a 50 ml bag of saline, uh -huh. and is going to bring it back to the appropriate amount that the calculations will yield for whatever uh, particular percentage she's making at the time. So for instance, if she was making, say, a 40%, uh -huh. she will try to extract 20 mLs of serum. And of course, you know, it's a 60 ml syringe, so it's pretty exact as far as that measurement is concerned. And then she will draw back all the way to 50 mLs with the saline. So then, ostensibly, you've got 20 mLs of serum, you've got 30 mLs of saline to yield that 40%. Now they're putting the 30 to 40 to 50 percent serum tears in these. These are the drop tanners? Yes, sir. How, what's the volume of each vial? The volume of each vial will be ultimately about 2 mLs of, of material. 20 drops per mL. Yeah. So these will probably uh, yield about 40 drops per drop tank. Sure. So when they come in and we're making their drops in the hood, we're basically going to try to yield 24 individual droppers. Okay. So if we're making 50, 50 mLs of total product, we're going to try to get roughly two mLs in each one. Now, some people are, are hard sticks, meaning that they don't, you know, relinquish blood as easily as some other patients do. If that's the case and say we only have five vials, for a 40% autologous drop, we're not going to be able to yield as much total volume as we wanted to, so they may only have an ml in each of them. But we are going to try to extract as much as we possibly can from those serum tubes. That's good. So each one will come housed in our new care autologous eye serum box. It's going to have auxiliary instructions on the back of it. This, of course, is the top. The label with the directions and the patient information and the prescriber information will go on the bottom. You lift up the flap, open it up, and of course you'll see 24 wells with which uh, the serum droppers will be. When you get the box, go ahead and take it and put it into the freezer. 
Uh, once you've got it into the freezer, what you'll do is uh, every time you're switching to a new vial, you'll open it up, take out the next dropper that you're about to use, keep that one in the refrigerator after it's thawed, keep the rest back into the freezer. So this would go back you, into the freezer. Once you take it out from the frozen state, mm -hmm. how long is it good for at room temperature? Well, three days in the refrigeration is what we do. Now, at room temperature, that's going to be a different thing. They're not preserved. So one thing that you don't want to do is keep them at room temperature for too long of a period of time. If you find that it's been a brief excursion for, say, 20 minutes or an hour or something like that, it's probably fine. Turn it back to the, to the fridge. If it's been a prolonged period of time, overnight, a couple of days, I would probably go ahead and move on to the next one. The serum tiers are going to be packaged in 24 individual drop tainers, each containing somewhere between 1 and 2 mLs, depending on how much the total prescription yielded in the lab. Uh, you're going to use each vial for three days or until it's gone, whichever comes first. You store it long term in the freezer. Take one out at a time, thaw it, and then keep the active one that you're currently using in the refrigerator. Typically people often ask, uh, what if I'm traveling, running errands, so on and so forth. They can be kept cool during transit. I usually tell people either soft coolers with ice bricks, which we can provide at the pharmacy, or if you have like a tumbler, let's say, put, that, put ice in that. You can put the drop tainer in, say, a baggie and put it inside the tumbler. That way, water doesn't infiltrate the actual packaging. We will give the patient a larger bag with Typically it's one, but we'll give more if we need. And of course you can refreeze this and use this in your uh, portable cooler if you want, if you're running errands. But anyway, we'll put one of those in with the medication on top of it. We'll close the bag. And then typically we'll come over here to the counseling window. And if the patient has any questions or concerns about the medication, we'll go over it in detail. So hopefully this video gives you a better understanding of what serum tears are, how they're made, and how they're used. We see a lot of patients with dry eye. Pretty much if you live long enough, you too will develop dry eye. And a lot of people will use artificial tears with good success, but also a lot of patients will use artificial tears, gel drops, ointments, restasis, Zedra, or other prescription eye drop medications and still have very symptomatic and bothersome dry eye. And for these patients, we found that serum tears has proven to really be the ultimate treatment to help these patients experience the relief that they're looking for. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it was helpful. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.